Okay, so this is the pre-lab lecture for the second experiment. Again, another simple experiment this week. This entire experiment involves pipetting, and it's going to be pipetting and taking masses, and we're going to be doing a little bit with densities. So to start, I'm just going to go over quickly what the pipette looks like, kind of how it operates real quick. Then we'll get into the math behind it, and I'll finish off with showing you guys how this is done in Excel. So if you guys look here, you have the two parts of this. You have the pipetter here and then the pipette tip here. So really important to note, so pipettes read from the top here down. So the top here is zero and they read by how much you dispense. So right here, this is a 10 mil pipette tip. And very important to note, if we look right at the bottom here, what you guys are gonna notice, if you look very carefully, is this area here doesn't have any markings on it. So the rest of this has markings on the way down. This tip doesn't. So if you needed to dispense 10 mils from this tip and you're at the zero, you go from the zero to the 10. You don't dispense this tip here because it's uncalibrated. So again, with the pipette tips, we're reading them from the top down so on this pipette tip, if I wanted to dispense two mils and I was at the zero mark, I would go from zero down to two. And that's how you would read the pipette tip here. Now, how would you actually dispense it? Well, you'd be using this pipetter here. So this tip goes into the pipetter right down here. And you guys are gonna see it's pretty simple. So there's the thumb wheel here. There's this vertical lever here, and then there's the plunger. So when you guys turn this thumb wheel, this plunger is gonna start coming up. And if the tip here is in liquid, it will draw the liquid up. So very important when we're using these guys, don't turn them upside down. We don't wanna get any liquid into like this area here because you can ruin the pipetters that way. So again, you use the thumb wheel to draw liquid up. And then when you're ready to dispense, you can actually press this lever down here and that will start dispensing the liquid. And again, we want to go, for this case, we want to go to 10. You go from 0 to 10, and you stop here. You don't empty this out. So if you guys do empty this out, you will mess your measurements up, and you'll see that it will throw the readings off. So during the experiment, you guys are going to be transferring 2 mils of either water, alcohol, or an alcohol-water mixture into a beaker or flask, depending on what you're using, and you're gonna be weighing it each time. So you're gonna be taking mass measurements along with the volume measurements. So the reason we're doing this is we wanna solve for density. So for those who don't know, density is equal to mass over volume. In our case here, it's gonna be equal to grams over milliliters. So obviously we're going to be measuring out in milliliters and we're going to be getting a mass measurement based off that volume measurement. So that will let us calculate the density. Now the way we're going to do this over multiple readings is we're actually going to make a graph. So we make a graph real quick. And we had a line on it. The important thing to remember is, you guys remember back to like Algebra 1, the slope of this line is going to be equal to the rise over the run or another way of representing that is delta y over delta x and now if you guys look our density is grams per milliliter our slope is delta y over delta x so you guys can see that these are very similar so all i got to do is, is set up my axes right and the slope of this line will be density. So the way to do that is if we set the volume as our x and mass as our y. So now the slope of this line, our delta y will be mass, our delta x will be volume. The other way to think of this is the mass in this case is dependent on the amount of liquid we dispense. So the other way you guys can, you've probably heard x and y variables described before is the independent 
and the dependent variable. So in this case, our mass is dependent on our volume that we dispense. So really the last piece of math we need other than our density formula and our slope formula is to figure out what the fraction of our mixture would be. So there's going to be a mixture that is used in this lab as well. And it's an unknown mixture, so we don't know exactly how much alcohol and how much water is in that mixture. But we can use the densities to solve for that. And you guys are going to see this in your post lab. But the formula for that is going to be the density of our mixture is going to be equal to the density of the water times the fraction of water. This is going to be plus the density of the alcohol times the fraction of the alcohol. So this looks a little scary but we can break it down pretty easily so all we're going to be doing here is solving for x and by solving for x we will be able to solve for the fractions of each of these so the best way to think of this is whatever fraction of the mixture that is water one minus that value will be the fraction of alcohol because both these fractions have to equal up to 100 so this mixture is just two parts it's part water part alcohol so if we can solve for one we can solve for the other so the way I like to do it is I like setting X as my water so if we say let X equal our fraction H2O we can say that one minus x would be equal to the fraction that's alcohol. That's because both parts have to equal up to 1. So once we're able to solve for the density, these densities are going to be, these two densities are going to be solved from the slope of the graphs we make. So those are like pseudo givens. Once you put the data in, you'll be able to get that value there. These fractions are just going to be x or 1 minus x. So all you would have to do in that case is distribute this through on each of these and just use some basic algebra and solve for x. And then remember, in this case, x is going to be the fraction of water and then 1 minus x would be the fraction that's alcohol. The other way to think about these guys is these are going to be decimals. And if you multiply them by 100, it'll give you the percent of each. So for example, and these numbers wouldn't be exact, but let's say you calculate out the density of water to be, say, 1.1. And our density of alcohol, we calculate out to be 0 0.98. So using what we did above, my fraction of water will just be x. It's going to be plus my fraction of alcohol is going to be 1 minus x. And again, density of mixture would be something you would solve from the slope of a graph you do. So in this case, let's say it's something like 1.01. So we're just solving for x. So all we're going to do is distribute these both through. So we get one point. 1x plus 0 0.98 minus 0 0.98x. And then this is all equal to 1.01. .01. So now if we get our combined terms on the right side, so we'd have to subtract the 0 0.98. So this is going to turn into 0 0.03. And then that's just going to leave my x term. So this is 1.1. This is 0.98. And it's a minus. So if we subtract those two, we get 0.12x. So now we just have to solve for x. So if we divide both sides by 0.12, we would end up getting x being equal to 
to 5. And we said earlier that x was going to be our fraction of water. So this mixture here would be 25% water. And if we look back up here, we said that 1 minus x would be equal to the fraction of alcohol. So if we did 1 minus 0 0.25, that's going to equal 0 0.75 or 75% alcohol. So that's how you would do the math to solve for what the mixture is made up of. So obviously for the post lab, you guys are going to have to make those charts to be able to get the slopes to be able to calculate the density for the water, the alcohol, and the mixture. So I'm going to show you guys how you would do that in Excel. So I just made some data up real quick. We're going to say this was the mass of the water we did. So again, you would calculate the mass. You guys are going to do that kind of on your worksheet. You're going to have the mass of the dry beaker flask, and you're just going to be subtracting that from what you get. And as you go through the experiment, obviously, you're going to be adding two mils each time. So obviously, you start at zero. The mass is zero. You add two mils. We get 1.98 in this case. Add another two mils. So for four mils in total, we're going to say 3.95 etc. So now we have to make this a chart. So Excel makes this really easy. We're just going to go up to here and insert. We're going to go to scatter plot. And we're going to want this. It will try to autofill this, but I'm going to show you guys what's going to happen if it doesn't. So we're just going to fix that real quick. So even if it does fill in, you may just want to go and check data because sometimes it may not check it right. So all we do here, you right click and we're going to do select data. We're going to hit add series name. We don't really have to worry about, but series X values. So remember we want our volume to be our X value. So I'm just going to click and drag. That's going to select all those values, hit enter. And then we're going to hit select uh, series Y values. So again, we're going to click and we want mass to be our Y. So we're going to highlight that enter. And you guys are going to see that's going to put it on the graph. Now, if you want to name this series, you could call it whatever you want, D, H2O, and we're going to hit OK. So you guys are going to see it already. It auto titled that for me. We're going to go back and fix a couple things. So this is great. We still need our slope, though. So we're going to click on one of the data points. It's going to highlight our data. We're going to right click, and we're going to add trend line. We add trend line. We want to make sure it's linear because this is a linear series. We want our equation of the line that it gives us to give us a slope that's rise over run. So we're going to go display equation on chart. And a good habit to get into is to display R squared value on chart. So R squared is going to tell you how accurate that trend line is. So basically the computer is just drawing a line of best fit through your data. The closer that R squared value is to 1, the closer that line of best fit is to fitting your data. So in this case, a R squared of 0 0.9993 is pretty good. So we can move that so we can read it better. And you guys can see, so remember the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope. So this value here would be our slope. So our density in this case would be 1.01. .01. So now a couple other things we got to do to kind of clean this up. So we have to label our axes. So if you guys go here, you're going to see axis titles, data labels. You can do a bunch of different things. But for this case, we just want axis titles. Obviously, go through here, fix these up. So again, our x is our volume. So we can say volume. And it's always good to include the unit here. So we're going to say volume in milliliters. And this is going to be mass in grams and then you could give this a better title too you could name this like type it out density of water graph density of water chart however you guys want to label that but that's basically how you use excel for this so basically you're doing this for all three sets of data and remember the equation of the line that it gives you that this value here will be your density that you would use in that 
density equation that we just did. Other than that, that's pretty much it for this pre-lab. Again, pretty simple experiment this week. Uh, most of the work is going to be the post-lab with using Excel, making those charts, and then solving for the fraction that that unknown mixture is. Other than that, pretty simple. We'll go over more on how you use the pipettes when we're up in lab, but that's basically it for this pre-lab lecture.